So the Warsaw Uprising Museum uh, tells me not just the story of the uh, resistance to Nazi occupation in, in Warsaw during World War II, but I think looks back on kind of the, the culture of Poland and what it meant to be Polish, um, having you know lost its country for almost 200 around 200 years, to come back for a short period and then face Nazi occupation. The idea that the culture is able to survive and endure and keep its, his, its centuries of history and legacy uh, throughout the uprising really had an impact on me. I found that the, the will of the people to never accept anything other than what they knew to be right, to be their culture and their freedoms, uh, and to endure all of this uh, throughout the years is truly an inc impeccable uh, accomplishment. That when you look at Poland only being a country for 50 years, when you add the time between World War I and World War II and post-Soviet occupation, their, their ability to endure history and survive is truly a testament and uh, a great accomplishment that uh, all cultures, I think, should really appreciate the history of where they came from and never forget those things. Being a military member, uh, I can certainly appreciate seeing the, the map of the uprising and seeing how the, the units maneuvered in order to gain ground within the city. But, but I think more incredible than that is, is truly, again, just going back to, to the willingness to continue on um, despite all the struggles uh, you know, when the uprising began and the Russians uh, did not come in to support them, they didn't stop. Nothing was going to stop them from being the, the free country they were. Uh, they saw themselves as, and even after, a comp, uh, after the uprising and then the, the Soviet occupation, they still endured for 40 years after that um, and, and still never lost that idea of freedom. And that, that truly has an impact on me. Uh, as an American, um, we, we take freedom uh, very personally and something we hold dear to our hearts and to see. And we've, we have never faced a struggle uh, like the Polish people have, where they were truly forced uh, to be something other than themselves and they never let that happen. Um, so it, it hits very close to the heart and, and truly speaks to, to the modern day. Um, what, what people view as freedoms and the importance of freedom. I think there's some views today that look at what is good for the, the people uh, at the cost of the freedoms of, the, of, the, of those people. Um, I think there's, there's goodness in the effort, but when you lose that sight, uh, it quickly becomes uh, to a level that you, you realize you, you've lost something, and, and the Poles never lost it, and that's truly an impressive uh, thing for me to see in this museum. Remembrance is absolutely important. Uh, if we don't remember where we came from, we don't know where we're going, um, and we're doomed to make the same mistakes we've made throughout history. And, and despite that, many people still, you see the politicians today still make the same mistakes that, that have gone on throughout history. Um, but to, to, you always have to remember these things because you have to remember the struggles and where, these, where the world ended up and what they had to do to survive that. Um, I think the Warsaw Uprising Museum really spoke to the Polish willingness to survive and, and endure throughout the struggle and maintain themselves uh, despite uh, several attempts on their, their freedoms uh, from both the Nazis and the Soviets. The Warsaw Rising Museum is telling a breathtaking story about the people, Polish people, uh, taking an uneven fight against German Nazi uh, forces uh, still in the middle of the occupied German occupied territories while the front was closing in, fighting the uneven uh, and very unpleasant fight against the occupants. Uh, all the atrocities which were happening uh, all around and actually leaving the city in the ruins that actually the today Warsaw is the brand new city old like 80 years or so. Uh, I have to say that seeing this story told here uh, was really really moving and uh, me being from the country which as well experienced uh, German occupation and atrocities uh, against our people as well. So I understand uh, and uh, for me it's still something so strong uh, listening to these stories that I have to say that in no way I regret to come here and see all this. Taking in consideration all the uh, pieces of that time uh, in a personal belongings or or written stories, uh, it's something, something so moving that I recommend everybody should see this. Not just to see the brave fight 
of the Polish people, but as well to remember and to understand what happened then, that we will never forget to repeat it again. As it was said, the one who doesn't know his history or one's history is condemned to repeat it. And taking in consideration things which are going right now uh, around in the Eastern Europe, that's something which should be told even more because it's very important in nowadays as well. The remembrance today is, as I said, it's even, I think, even more important because uh, in Europe, last 80 years, mainly in Western Europe, but uh, in last 30 years, even in the Eastern Europe, Eastern Bloc, we are experiencing of a life of good times. And what I can see in the society, not just only in our country, but I think it's, it's, it's all over the Europe, and not just only all over the Europe, but in the whole Western world, people are starting to forget and genetic memory of these things are fading while the people who remember and lived through the days are fading away. So it's even more important to tell to the young youngsters to explain them what happened, uh, to explain to the politicians again what happened, not to allow it again. And that's the reason why everybody should know his own history.